just got a ton of interviews of actors talking about the final season of Game of Thrones. Oh, and apparently John loved Egret more than Danny. Yikes. Warning, there are spoilers for the final season of Game of Thrones in this video. Watch at your own risk. Also, Targaryen Dragon video still coming this week. Prepare yourself. Though, not with lube. Unless dragons are your thing. I, I don't really judge. Okay, so again, there's a lot of interviews talking about the final season of Game of Thrones, so I want to start with Arya's actress Maisie and her talking about the end season of Game of Thrones. She really, really hopes fans like it. She said, I'm really proud of what we've done, but ultimately I don't think anyone is ready for the show to finish. I think it's going to be very unexpected. In a lot of these interviews, the actors or actresses are saying that the final season is shocking or unexpected. I don't know, I feel like a lot of us expect a lot of death in the final season. They would have to do a lot to surprise me. Maybe she's talking about people that aren't as deep into Game of Thrones as we are. Because we're in deep. What I love about this interview was Maisie is so happy she played Arya. Some actors have seemed a bit burned out, but she remained very positive about her time on Game of Thrones. On being known as Arya Stark for the rest of her career, she responded, In terms of what I want to go on and do, I guess I'm okay with being known as Arya forever. I'm not mad with this show being the best thing I ever do. It changed the game for television, and it's unlike anything we've really seen before and it reached audiences that this style of drama has never reached before. I'm not mad if this is as good as it gets. It was pretty bloody good. She was an iconic character. There weren't any girls written like that. And since there have been younger characters written in this way, but now when I read scripts, I realize how special she was. I hope I do other things, but I hope I never do anything like Arya again because she was in a league of her own. I know people, every time I say this, like to go on and on about how Game of Thrones sucks and it hasn't changed anything. That's cool if that's your opinion, but cold hard data says this show has changed a lot of things for television. Something can change things and you can still dislike it. Those things are exclusive. I mean, Arya's character alone has changed so much. I even look at Solo and what they did for certain characters and how they said their inspiration was her, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Anyways, again, I'm really happy for Maisie being so proud of her character and glad she has good memories because for a while, she admitted she went to a really dark place because of bullying from being on Game of Thrones and fans tormenting her and mocking her as a teen. She has really moved on and found a more positive place. Moving on, we again saw the same speech we've heard before explaining why we waited so long for the final season of Game of Thrones. David explains, saying, the final season has taken a long time because it's the biggest thing we've ever done. Even though it's six episodes, we spent nearly a full year in Belfast either prepping it or shooting it. It's quite extraordinary what the crew and the actors have created, and I think when people see it, they'll understand why it took so long. It would have been really tough if we'd lost any core cast members along the way. So we're very happy that we've kept everyone and we get to finish in the way we want to. I mean, they are really lucky they didn't lose any core cast members for the final season. We know that Amelia Clark had a hard time filming the final season because she was working on Solo and then doing all the promotional stuff for it. Despite the evidence the show will be less minutes than season 7, and really less minutes than any other season, let's hope David is being very truthful with how extraordinary the final season will be. And that we'll all think the wait was well worth it. From all the leaks, I think it's going to be a visually impressive season, but the storyline might suffer under time constrictions. Continuing on, Masande's actor said what we've been hearing quite a bit about the final season, saying, It's going to be incredibly exciting and heartbreaking. People will have their minds blown by the final episode. Again, I can't think of one single ending that would absolutely blow my mind. I think the only thing that I would find absolutely shocking is if the others actually won or it was a stalemate and they built a new wall and then the others were stuck on the other side just to come back in a couple thousand years. I mean, I wholly expect for Danny to die in childbirth, for Grey Worm to die, and for most of the characters that are left on the show to bite it. There's just not really any final death scene that could shock me at this point. Of course, Natalie had more to say about season 8, telling The Sun, It's going to be amazing and better than any series we have had so far. It does the final series justice. 
It is so brilliant. It's bittersweet. I think it's come to its natural end. We had such a beautiful time and we have such an amazing cast that has been through so much together. As sad as it is, I think they have not. Sometimes with a TV show or anything, it gets to the point where it loses quality and we have managed to maintain such a high quality and people still want it. But they are only telling it in the number of hours they need and telling it how they want to tell it. I think there is a real integrity to that and I completely support that and I am sad it's ending because I don't get to go back and work with my friends next year or this year. So that's sad but I think it's a good time too. It's an end of an era. Later, she also shared what Game of Thrones did for her, saying, It literally changed my career. I was working in retail when I got that job. So I'm excited to see where her career goes after Thrones, and I hope she's really successful because she seems like a very nice person. And she's talented, so... Fingers crossed. Sam's actor John shared more about the final season, explaining, Every single episode in season 8 is going to be monumental. Viewers are going to get six episode nines this year. Which is probably just more actor hype, but we'll have to see. Oh, and speaking of hype, that King's Landing set they built to demolish and totally fuck up during the final season took two million dollars to build. I'm not even surprised. That thing is crazy impressive and they did so much filming on it. I've been saying this for months, but I cannot wait to see it get destroyed in the final season. Okay, next we were told again each episode will be more than 60 minutes, so we'll have to wait for a final confirmation to know the exact numbers. As of right now, evidence suggests around 60 minutes for the first two episodes and 80 minutes for the last four. But HBO hasn't confirmed anything yet and hasn't finished editing the final season. HBO's programming president Casey touched on whether we were ever going to see a revival of Game of Thrones or a reunion, and he said, no, this shit is over. He didn't actually say this shit is over, but he said, no, there's going to be no revival. This final season is it for Game of Thrones. Which, did anyone think it was? We're going to get prequels, but they're not going to continue on the main show of Game of Thrones in any way. Moving on, Jon Snow's actor Kit, of course, had a lot to say about his character and the final season of Game of Thrones. I swear there are like two interviews a week from that guy. He is always in the spotlight or on the move, and I'm happy his career is still going strong. So Kit talked about being excited for the final episodes of Game of Thrones, saying what he said before. Hopefully it will change TV again, like Game of Thrones did originally, and break boundaries. I think it might. Kit's been saying this a lot, and yeah, Game of Thrones did originally change a lot, so we'll see if this final season does one final thing for television. But Kit did talk more about the show's long-term strategy, saying, In the first season, everyone said, Game of Thrones is great. It's a fantasy, but there's no magic. It's really based in reality. Then gradually, as we go along, the magic has started coming out of the woodwork, as it does in the books, and everything starts getting very strange. You've got the White Walkers, and you've got witches, and you've got dragons. I think that's one of the more exciting things about it. It creeps up on you and, before you know it, you're in a proper fantasy with dragons and ice zombies, but it's done in a very, very clever way. I mean, we kind of got the other's magic and dragons from season one, but I get what he's saying. However, Kit also talked about what the series meant to him, explaining, It's what the series is really about for me. It's about people's worlds just falling apart. They were in quite a secure place at the start of all this, but by the time you get to where we are now, everyone's lives have been blown apart. Interestingly, Kit said he would most like to play Tyrion Lannister, revealing, I couldn't play him, obviously, but I think Peter Dinklage does such a wonderful job with him. When I was reading the books ages ago, I always loved reading Jon Snow's parts because that's who I was going to play. But then I'd get excited when I got to the Tyrion sections as well. Their dynamic is intriguing because they like each other, so maybe that bled through somehow. They're both outsiders. Now here's where things get a bit juicy. Kit may have admitted that Jon was happier with Egret than he ever was with Danny. So when asked who he would resurrect in the show, he said Rob, Catelyn, and Egret, saying, Just because I miss Richard Madden and Michelle Farley who played them. On Egret, he said, I think Jon's never been happier than when he was with her, and I don't think he ever will be. I may be looking way too hard into this, but that line was sort of suspicious. 
I mean, maybe because he's going to knock up Danny and then she's going to die in childbirth, but then, I don't know, that's saying he's never going to find someone to be happy with? Or happier than he was with that redhead? And what, his kids won't make him happier than he was with Egret? That sounds rough. Oh, and it is being said, George gave them some storyline suggestions for the final season of Game of Thrones, so some of the things we see in the final season may actually be in the books. Yay? Though, of course, we have to remember George has said plenty of characters alive in the show aren't in the books, and plenty of characters alive in the books aren't in the show. And the show cut out quite a bit of plot. So whatever we see in the final season, the books will get to that destination in a much different way. I personally look forward to comparing how each character's story ends in the show versus the books because I think we'll see some radical differences. Cough, Stannis, cough, you sons of a bitch. All right, there's some Game of Thrones news. Like, subscribe, and remember, Davos is going to die this final season and there's nothing we can do about it.